These big channels have set the bar for video editing so high in some niches that, honestly, viewers now expect every video to look like a mini masterpiece. And let's face it, if a video doesn't at least come close, people just tune out. But here's the thing, not all of us have the skills or resources to edit at that level. I know I don't. Most of us don't have the budget to hire those top-tier editors either. I mean, we're talking price tags that can range from a few hundred to thousands of dollars per video. And the time? Editing can take two to three weeks even for pros. That's a big ask if you're working solo or just starting out. But here's the good news. That doesn't mean we're doomed to creating videos that look like amateur hour next to these YouTube editing gurus. We can pick up some simple tricks to create impressive videos without breaking the bank, and Adobe Premiere Pro is perfect for that. While the pros often pair Premiere Pro with After Effects to create their masterpieces, we're keeping it simple and sticking with Premiere Pro. You can still create videos that are considerably better than the one you're watching right now. Oh, and if you're a CapCut fan, don't worry, I've got you covered with a separate video all about editing with CapCut. Now let's get started. If you're new to Premiere Pro, don't stress, you simply need to repeat this process to create your new project. Once you've got your project set up, the next step is creating your main sequence. It's super simple. Just right-click inside the project window and select New Sequence from the options. You'll see a bunch of presets, and while you can totally use one of those, I personally like creating a custom preset that works for any new projects. Trust me, it saves so much time down the line. Here's how to do it. Go to Settings, then pick either 30 or 60 frames per second, whichever works best for your style. After that, specify your video dimensions. Leave everything else as is, unless you're feeling extra confident in your computer's graphics card. In that case, you can turn on bit depth and render quality for video preview. But honestly, I usually leave those unchecked. Once you're done, save your settings as a preset so you can use it again for future videos. Oh, and don't forget to rename your sequence. It's a small thing, but it'll help keep your project super organized. Now, if you ever feel like something's missing, maybe a window or panel you can't find, just head over to the Window menu and select what you need. It's all there, and it's a lifesaver if something accidentally closes on you. All right, let's dive into the first thing I want to show you, creating a cool background for your animations. I'm going to show you how to create a slick grid background, and it's easier than you might think. First, create a color mat in your preferred color, Pick something that complements your overall vibe and rename it so you don't lose track. Drag and drop it into your project timeline and extend the duration as much as you need. Then make sure your background layer is selected. Head over to Effects, search for Grid and drop it onto the layer or into the Effects control panel. Increase the width of the grid until it looks just right to you and then drop the opacity to around 50%. Now, head back to the Effects panel, search for Ramp, and add it to the same layer. You can choose any start and end colors that fit your style. This is where you can really get creative. Next, add a noise effect to give the background some texture. Play around with the noise amount, and if you're into a more colorful look, you can check the Color Noise option. Then, add the Turbulent Displace effect. Set the amount to 20 and the size to 50. To animate it, start at the beginning of the layer. Set keyframes for the evolution in the turbulent displace effect as well as the grid's anchor effect. Now move to the end of the layer, decrease the horizontal value, and bump up the evolution to your liking. Check out the result. You've got yourself a pretty cool animated background. I like to go one step further and add a vignette to the background. To do that, grab the circle effect, drop it onto the layer and set the blending mode to Stencil Alpha. Then, increase the radius and feather the edges until you get that smooth, subtle fade around the corners. With the background done, it's a good idea to organize your project a bit. I'd recommend creating a few folders for your files. Totally optional, but trust me, it makes life easier when you're working with a bunch of assets. Now let's move on to some simple text animations. Grab the Type tool and click or drag where you want your text to appear. Type in your word or phrase, and then expand the options to format it. You can tweak the font type, size, and even alignment. Whatever works best for your style. If part of your text isn't showing, just select it and use the handles to expand the text box. Once you've resized the box, you can reposition the text exactly where you want it. You can also add some style, like a shadow, background, or stroke, and tweak the text color to match your vibe. Now let's animate the text to make it slide in from the left. Start by setting a keyframe here, then move to the beginning of the layer and drag the text to the left until it's completely off-screen. To make it feel a little more dynamic, you can smooth out the animation. Check this out. It looks smoother now, but if you want to refine it even more, undo the previous steps and use the transform effect instead. Add position keyframes and adjust them to your liking. Here's a pro tip. Set up keyboard shortcuts for ease in and ease out because you'll be using those all the time. Personally, I assign the 8 and 9 keys for these shortcuts. It's super easy. Just search for the function, drag it to your preferred key, and you're good to go. Once your shortcuts are set, 
Select the keyframes and hit 8 and 9 for ease in and ease out. To make the animation extra smooth, click on the keyframe and adjust the curve in the graph editor. Pull this line over here, then move the first one up slightly like this. Check it out. The animation now starts quickly and then slows down smoothly. Now if you want the text to move to a different position, just set a keyframe at the current point. Drag the playhead to where you want the text to shift and change its position. Use those shortcut keys to shape the curve and tweak the joints until you're happy with how it looks. You can create something super cool, like having the text start slow, speed up, and then ease into a smooth stop. It's all about playing around until it feels just right. All of this really comes down to personal preference, so take your time experimenting with the curves until you get something you're happy with. Now, if you want to create another text layer, you can easily duplicate your existing one. Just hold down the Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows and drag the layer to duplicate it. Once you've got your duplicate, select it. Double-click to edit the text and make any changes you like, whether it's the color, font, or size. Don't forget to set keyframes for the position and smooth them out just like before. Here's the thing though, if the original text is still visible behind the new one, it can make the new text harder to read. To fix this, I like to darken and blur the text in the background. There are plenty of ways to do this, but my go-to is creating a nested sequence for the layer. After nesting, add this effect to the new sequence and set keyframes for the exposure to make it slightly darker. Then, add a blur effect and set keyframes for the blurriness. As you can see, the lower text becomes darker and blurry as the new one comes in making it easier to see. Another trick for text animations? Motion graphic templates. These are a lifesaver. You can find tons of them online, both free and paid. Just drag and drop them into your timeline and boom, you've got a professional looking animation in seconds. You can customize them by changing the text, font and colors right there in the template. Using these templates speeds up your workflow so much. Feel free to download as many of these as you need for your projects. You can also save time with effects like these. Just drop them on your layer and move the keyframes to the duration you prefer. Simple as that, and you have a nice smooth animation without going through the process of animating it yourself. Another must-have tool for your workflow is Premiere Composer. You can grab this free plugin directly from their website. Once you've got it installed, you can enable the window from here. I personally prefer placing it right after effects controls like this. Premiere Composer is super handy because it comes packed with useful presets. All you have to do is drag a preset onto your timeline, and then you can tweak everything from the text and font to its position and more. If you decide a different preset works better, just hit the replace button and it swaps out seamlessly. You can also adjust the preset duration and entry animation speed right here. To add a little flair, you can add a drop shadow effect, pick your favorite color, and experiment with the settings to create a glowing effect. Now let's bring in an image. You can grab images from this website. For the best results, search for PNG files. If you don't find what you need, switch to vector files instead. When using vector files, you might need to remove background colors and convert them into PNG files. For that, drop the vector file into Photo P, turn off the background layer, and then download the image as a PNG. Once your files are ready, import them into Premiere Pro and add them to your project timeline. To animate the image, add a transform effect and set keyframes for both position and scale. At the beginning of the animation, slightly decrease the scale and move the character off screen. It already looks decent, but you can take it to the next level by smoothing out the animation. Use your shortcut keys for ease in and ease out, and then bump up the shutter angle to add some nice motion blur. For an even smoother animation, expand the graph editor, grab the points and adjust them for a more polished entry animation. Now to move the character around, first you'll need to set your keyframes. Move forward a bit in the timeline and adjust the character's position to where you want them to go. If the graph looks awkward, smooth it out for a cleaner motion. Once the animation looks good, you can add a text layer, format it properly and then create a nested sequence. Now you can use the transform effect to animate the text. For example, have the text slide in from behind the character as they move to the left. Don't forget to add some motion blur to make the animation feel smoother and more natural. Next, bring in the crop effect to refine the reveal. Head to the first keyframe, select the crop effect, and set a keyframe for the left position. Then drag the handle from the left until the text is completely hidden. Move forward a frame at a time, dragging the handle gradually to make the text appear in sync with your animation. Here's an extra touch to make it pop. You've probably noticed that in a lot of videos, characters tend to have a subtle movement on the screen. You can easily recreate this effect by downloading a camera shake preset. 
One popular option is the Essential Motion Preset Pack. It includes a free camera shake effect and you can explore their other packages if you're interested. To install it, go to the Effects panel, right-click on Presets, and select Import Preset. Once it's loaded, expand the Essential Motion folder in your presets and you'll see a variety of options. For the camera shake effect, just drag and drop the camera wiggle preset onto your image. Check out the result. Your animation now has a subtle, dynamic shake that really adds a professional touch. Now let me show you how to create a simple shape animation. Remember, video editing is really just combining a bunch of these tricks. Once you know how to make them, it's all about using your imagination to create something unique. Start by choosing your preferred shape, like a circle, from the Shape tool. Go to the workspace, click, and drag to draw it. You can change the color here to match your style, then add the transform effect. We'll have the circle move from left to right, so set your keyframes for the position and add some motion blur for smoothness. Once the motion looks good, smooth out the keyframes to refine it further. With the circle layer still selected, grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle over the circle. Here's the fun part. The circle will transform into a square by the time it reaches the end of the animation. To do this, set the square's opacity to zero at the start of the transition. Add a keyframe at the point where the transition begins, then go forward to where you want the square to be fully visible and set the opacity to 100. Repeat the process for the circle, but in reverse. Start with its opacity at 100 and drop it to zero at the same transition point. Smooth out these keyframes, and you've got a nice, seamless shape morphing animation. Now let's take it up a notch by adding a text reveal. Create your text layer and use the mask tool to hide the text initially. Set a keyframe for the path, then slowly reveal the text frame by frame as you move forward. It already looks good, but let's add one final touch. Animate the square shape over the text again to transition it to a different color. Simply split the text layer at the point you want the color to change, and then select the second part to change its color to whatever you prefer. To tie it all together, drop this transition between the two clips and animate the shape moving back to the left. And just like that, here's your result. Now let's move on to working with an actual video. You can create an entrance animation by using the transform effect. Add some flair by incorporating a smooth zoom in and zoom out effect. A cool addition to this is the basic 3D effect. Just play around with the settings and if you want to take it further, add keyframes to animate those settings for dynamic results. Next, let's highlight something in your video. There are a few ways to do this. The simplest is to draw a rectangle over the area you want to emphasize, pick a color, and adjust the blending mode to something like this. Then add the crop effect and animate it from the left to create a smooth highlight animation. Another way is to duplicate the layer and add a crop effect to focus on the area you want to highlight. Apply Lumetri color and Gaussian blur to the bottom layer, making the highlighted section on the top layer stand out. For extra impact, add a transform effect to animate the top layer, giving it a little pop. You can even nest these layers together and throw in a basic 3D effect for something more creative. Don't forget to include sound effects. They really make a huge difference and can elevate even the simplest animations. You can find free sound effects on websites like Pixabay. Or if you want to keep things simple, you can download the exact sound effects I use for free from my Discord server. The link is in the description and also on my channel page. The last approach to highlighting content is to grab one of these shapes from Premiere Composer, position it appropriately, and make any necessary changes. You can even add a drop shadow to give it some glow. Finally, let's talk about captions. Go to the Window menu and look for Text. From there, select Transcribe Sequence and pick the audio tracks you used. If you're unsure, leaving it at Mix works fine. Once the transcription is done, generate captions, adjust the maximum character length and the number of lines to your preference, and you're good to go. When your captions are ready, select them all and edit as needed. After that, it's time to export your project. Go to File, then Export Media. Choose your preferred file format, expand the video settings, and click Match Source. Don't forget to tick these two settings and then proceed to Export. I get that Premiere Pro may not be for everyone, so if you're looking for something simpler, be sure to check out my tutorial on editing with CapCut.